not an endocrinologist, I'm just an ob -gen. but I got so many questions about soy and hypothyroidism, I had to look it up. This is a review article in a well-respected thyroid journal. This article clearly states that hypothyroid adults do not need to avoid soy foods. There's a separate study done specifically in postmenopausal women that shows clearly not to avoid soy. It does not do anything to their thyroid function. This is one of those things that gets passed along in the health culture and amongst gurus and people with dubious certifications who don't keep up with the latest research. They hear something, it sounds easy to pass along, and they just keep propagating it with no statistical data or basis to back it up. The simplest thing you can do to improve your hormones in just one to two weeks. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner and functional blood chemistry specialist and as someone who is in perimenopause before the age of 30 and who works with a lot of people who have hormone imbalances, this is the one thing that makes a massive difference, I will say right off the bat, and that is liver and detox pathway support. And here's the thing, so our liver does so much when it comes to hormones, whether that's sex hormones, stress hormones, so many hormones go through the liver are either converted into some other hormones like our thyroid hormones, T4 converted into T3, a lot of that's done in our liver, but also a lot of our excess hormones are filtered out through our liver so it gets out of our body. And so just some basic liver detox pathway support, whether that's just some food choices, foods that are very supporting for your liver. Uh, there's a lot out there and I have some other videos on this, uh, whether that's lifestyle things like Epsom salt baths, dry brushing, saunas, sweating, um, castor oil packs, all of these things are super, super great. I also have some other videos. Uh, and then also, you know, some supplementation can be really beneficial um, for this as well. That could be things like to support bile production, to support liver and, and your kidneys. Uh, a binder is really great, something to support natural energy levels as you're going through kind of this detoxification process. But this is a game changer. Now, this is not the be all end all. This is not saying that this is the only work you need to do, but this is a game changer to start feeling better quickly. So be sure to like and follow for more on how to balance your hormones. Are you having Hashimoto's issues? Hashimoto's is truly not a thyroid disease. It is an autoimmune disease that's targeting your thyroid. And it's not about giving you enough T4 or Synthroid or even iodine. Because guess what? Your body will not stop attacking the thyroid tissue. So Hashimoto's, that's an autoimmune disorder that can cause hypothyroidism. So let me explain a little bit about insulin resistance and certain hormonal disorders that cause insulin resistance. So clevelandclinic.org, hormonal disorders that cause insulin resistance, hypothyroidism. This is what happens, the condition when your thyroid is underactive and doesn't produce enough thyroid hormone. Your thyroid plays a large role in regulating your metabolism, how you transform the food you eat into energy, correct? So when it makes too little thyroid hormone, it slows down your metabolism, including your glucose metabolism, which can lead to insulin resistance. Now, what needs to happen is you need to focus on blood sugar levels, adrenals, the environmental toxins I'm always talking about, and leaky gut. Don't just rely on a thyroid hormone to reverse any of this. Insulin resistance is the root of these diseases. 
follow me for more if you want to learn more about how to reverse your insulin resistance.